Hey there, this is Raimu, and this is part four of my introduction to Rust series, taking it one step at a time. In the last part, we went over functions, and you might have been thinking to yourself, especially if you're familiar with other programming languages, why isn't Raimu talking about function arguments, function return values? Well, this is the video for you, because that's exactly what we're going to talk about this time. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to do cargo init part four, and then open that folder. And then starting with our blank template, let's start off by making a function. So we call it something like find answer. And we'll say something like print line. The answer is answer. Let's let the answer be 42. All right, so cargo run find the first problem is I forgot to actually use the function find answer. So as we learned in the last part, it's not enough just to declare a function, you actually have to call that function from your main. Okay, so far so good, right? Let's say we wanted to have the answer be the calculation of two numbers like x times y plus 5, just to throw in a constant. And let's say we had x equal 17 and let y equal 9. All right. So how do we get x and y into the function so that it can be used to calculate the answer? The answer, no pun intended, is to provide x and y as function arguments. So these are values that are provided to the function. Now, in order for the function to receive those arguments, it has to have in its definition names and types for those arguments. So just so that it's not as confusing, we'll just use the same names. These could be actually different names. We'll use the same names, x and y. And we have to actually declare their types. So we'll just make it i32. And that fixes it, right? Now we have data from our main actually passed into the function where it's used. So let's say we wanted to just have find answer find it and not necessarily print it. So now we have a similar problem where we have the answer in the function and we want to use it outside of the function. How do we get the answer back out? How do we return this value answer out of the function? The answer, again, no pun intended, is return values. So you would say, let the answer equal find answer. And similar to how you have to provide types for function arguments, you also need to provide a type for the return value of the function. And that is through an arrow and then a type. One more problem here that the compiler will help us with. The type is mismatched. We expected an integer and found nothing. The problem is that as in other programming languages, when you return from the function, you actually need to either specifically say return the answer, or there's a simpler way to do it in Rust, which we'll get to in a moment, but this should work. All right, so the simpler way to do this in Rust is to just remove a lot of this code. So we, we remove the return answer, we remove the let and the equal sign, and we remove the semicolon. Basically what Rust syntax allows is for the return value of the function to be implied by the last expression in the function. So in this case, this expression. Rust will say, oh, it's the last expression in the function, so that's what we're going to return. Now, you could actually return early. You can say something like return 42, in which case Rust will warn us that it never reaches this final expression, but it'll still work. Okay, so there's a lot more to talk about functions, but we'll save that for future videos because we need to introduce a few more concepts first. One of the methodologies that I like to use is test-driven development, where instead of just writing the solution to your problem, you first start by describing your problem in the form of a test. So let's say, for example, we want to find answer to take two numbers and multiply them and add five, but we haven't yet written this yet. And instead of just jumping in and writing that code, let's say we want to describe the problem and the correct solution to it in the form of a test. Now this might be a little silly for such a simple example, but extend this to more complicated things and you'll see where it's 
sometimes better to start with stating what the answer should be given some inputs than to go ahead and try to write that code from the start. So one way you can write unit tests or tests in Rust is to use the attribute test and we'll say test find answer. So a test in Rust is basically a function with this annotation onto it. And we can say given x is 5 and y is 7 and the answer is find answer x and y, we're going to assert that two things are equal. So an assertion is basically saying these two things had better be equal or we have a problem. The way it works with a test is that if the assertion of that two things being equal is not true, it'll mark the test as a failure. If they are equal, it's a success. So we will say we expect, let's see, seven, five times seven is 35 plus five, that would be 40 for the answer, right? Now it would be nice to run this test right away. Unfortunately, Rust won't compile this because again, it needs to have an integer actually return. So let's start off with zero, which is the wrong answer. So because I have Rust Analyzer installed, there's this nifty feature where we can just click a button to run a test. Let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see that the test failed. If you scroll up here, we'll see that it expected 40 and zero to match and they didn't. Now, without having that handy button to start the test, the way you would do this in the terminal is simply cargo test, which does the same thing. All right, so test-driven development saying we've written the specification of what we're going to be doing and what we expect to come out of it first. Now we are going to write the code inside of financer to make the test pass. So this is an easy example. So we just say, well, but let's say we actually typed four instead of five, right? This is where the test might come in handy because we see, oh, we're off by one. And then you inspect the code and like, oh yeah, that, that's right. That should have been a five. Running the test again, we'll see it passes now. Now, one extra thing that's encouraged to do for unit tests in Rust is to take the test and make sure that it's included only when you're actually running tests, not when you're going to ship the product. So one technique to do that is, we, like we've seen in previous videos, we can declare a module called tests. And then we're going to use what's called a conditional compilation based on the build configuration. So it's config test. What this does is it will only include this module if we're building the test configuration. So if we build our crate for shipping, the test won't be included. Now we do have this problem where it can't find find answer because find answer is in the outer module. So like we've shown in previous videos, you can import or alias a name from one module to another with a use. But what do we do if we want to reach up? In the previous videos, we could reach down into modules because we knew their names. But what is the name of the module outside of tests? Well, there's a special keyword called super, which we can use. So we could say use super find answer, and that brings find answer into this namespace here. And then our test still passes. One last thing is a lot of the times you'll find that you'll need to bring in a lot of things that you're testing. So one convenient thing you can do is to just have a single use where you bring in with a wild card that basically collapses all the names from the outside module into the tests and so there we have it okay so in summary in this video we covered how to pass values into functions and how to get them back out and we also introduced the concept of testing in rust how you can define a test function and develop your software in terms of describing the problem and the expected output and then writing your code, which is called test-driven development. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, we're going to dip into control flow, which is a very important topic. So I hope you'll keep watching the series and see you next time.